Hey everybody, I wanna show you something that will totally blow your mind. I'm gonna show you how to CH root into an ARM system, but on your PC. On your x86 compatible PC, we're gonna CH root into an ARM system. And we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna CH root into a stage three, an ARM stage three, and we're gonna CH root into a live Raspberry Pi image and we're gonna be able to use our PCs, RAM, and our CPU from our PC, in this case, my Ryzen, to build stuff for ARM. It's gonna be really awesome. So first thing we're gonna do is go to code.fun2.org over here, and we're gonna clone, just go to code.fun2.org, search for FCH root, fun 2 ch root or franken ch root i call it we're going to clone it you will get the http url and i'm going to plop it uh, that's my music player you don't need to see that so um i'm going to go into root on ryzen and i'm going to clone boom fch root is installed well cloned at least, right? So I did a few things to prep for this. I'm gonna show you what I did. So first you need to um, put this in your make.conf. See that? QEMU user targets, AR64 and ARM. And then you need to put this in your package.use. Um, this is what you want that I highlighted here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to emerge QEMU. And I already have it installed because I already did this. So I'm not going to go through that. But once that, that's all you need to do for setup. And then I will show you how this works. So I'm on my Ryzen. Let me try to find a browser window here. Um, I am going to go to build.fun2.org. I'm going to go to 1.3 release. I'm going to get a 64-bit ARM, the latest one. And I believe it's this first one. Yeah, it's the big file here. I'm going to copy the link address. Now I'm going to go into var temp, and I'm going to wget it. OK, it's grabbing, pulling it down. Okay, so downloaded. I'm going to make a directory called ARM 30, 64. So 64-bit. I'm going to go into ARM 64. I'm going to extract the tarball, XPVF, to the stage 3. I'm going to wait for it to complete. Unpacking. Da, 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 da. Okay, now we are ready to FCH root. So this is where the magic happens. I'm going to run. That's my FCH root repo. And in bin, there's a command called FCH root. And I'm just going to specify the directory. And this FCH root command is going to do all the magic we need to CH root in. Let's see if it works. If it works, we should get a prompt in our root directory. Boom. So we are now inside the CH root. This is really cool. It also did some stuff for us automatically. Like normally you would want to like bind mount, proc, and sys and dev. This script does that for us. FCH root does that for us so we don't have to. And it compiles a wrapper, uh, QEMU wrapper, and installs that and sets up stuff with the Linux kernel to use QEMU properly. It all happens transparently. So now we are in the ch root, and if I do uname a, you'll see, well, I'm still on my Ryzen, right? But what's this? As far as we're concerned in the ch root, we are in ARM 64-bit land. And if I run ego sync, um, by the way, Franken ch root also co copies over your resolve conf for you, so host name resolution should work. 
So right now it is running EgoSync, which is running Python, but it's running the 64-bit ARM version of Python, and it's using QEMU to emulate a 64-bit ARM. So it's acting as if it's a 64-bit ARM, but it is using my Ryzen CPU. It's using my Ryzen's memory. So this is obviously a huge benefit for building stuff for ARM systems because a lot of ARM systems have minimal RAM. They don't have a ton of cores. Um, this system has eight cores, 16 virtual cores. Um, when you build, you can totally build stuff uh, using eMerge. You can eMerge tons of stuff. I've eMerged GNOME this way for ARM. Now, it's not going to be quite as fast as nat native Ryzen compiles, but it's going to be a lot faster than ARM, especially if you have a really modern uh, workstation PC. Now, remember, you're not only going to get the benefit of your faster CPU, faster RAM, it's currently using my fast SSD that's on my workstation. And of, of course, this is super convenient. You can see it's pretty quick. It's it's grabbing all the the kits. And um, when it's done, we can emerge something like HTOP. Now, if I emerge HTOP, what you're going to see is here we go. It's about to finish. Da -da 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 -da. and give it a little bit so if i run htop in here i'm going to see it's, it's going to be interesting because i'm going to see this my ryzen cpu all my cores i'm going to see the processes running on my ryzen but as far as the ch root is concerned i'm in an arm 64 environment if i build something it's going to be built for arm 64 it's just going to leverage all of my workstation's computer uh, compute resources. So right now it is building HTOP. And just to give you uh, an idea of speed here, it's plugging away. So it's not quite as fast as native Ryzen, but you'll find, I think, that it's quite a bit faster than just your arm compiling on your arm and you can also do a lot of parallel builds so you can use emerge with the jobs option to to build a lot of stuff uh, at, at the same time use all your cores and plow through and this is super cool we're gonna let that keep that going and I'm gonna show you something even cooler my music player over here is running on a Raspberry Pi 3. It's on my network. And I have actually set up NFS4 on it. And I have exported the root file system here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to mount it to mount Raspi 3. I'm going to mount raspi3.local colon root to raspi3. So this is 32-bit ARM. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to run fch root and I'm going to fch root into a mount raspi3. Now remember this is a running system. I'm accessing the file system over NFS. And yet I can see a root into it. So this is a totally live system I'm on. But of course, when I type HTOP, I see all of my Ryzen cores. But underneath, I see my Raspi 3 file system. And I can emerge stuff on here, no problem. So the one trick you want to know when you emerge stuff uh, is in make.conf the IPC sandbox feature of portage will mess stuff up and uh, when you're when you're doing a Franken CH root the FCH root just 
for precaution, I turn off all sandboxing. Um, I, I think user sandbox and sandbox are, are fine. I think it's just IPC sandbox, but I just do this to be careful. And now, like, you could go ahead and emerge GNOME and let it sit there. It might take, like, you know, overnight to emerge GNOME for a Raspberry 3 using a Ryzen, but it's a lot faster than trying to do it on your actual Raspberry 3 where it could sit there for days. So this is just totally cool. Whenever I emerge here, the Raspberry 3 is sort of unaware of what's going on. Its file system is just getting updated with as the emerge is complete. Stuff is getting dumped via NFS onto the Raspberry 3's file system. And everything is an ARM binary. All the binaries are in ARM format. So the Raspberry 3 is happy. It can run, run all the stuff. So that is very cool. Let's go back here. Remember, we're in our 64-bit ARM CH root. And you can see when I run HTOP, you see all of the cores on your Ryzen. You see all the memory. I have 32 gigs on, on this Ryzen. Um, you can see all of my processes on the Ryzen. But when I build stuff in the CH root, it's going to build it for ARM. And I'm going to show you basically sort of behind the scenes how this works. Um, what FCH root does is it installs these little wrappers inside the CH root. Um, this is a static binary of QEMU. So it does the emulation part that makes the magic work. And it's statically compiled. Uh, then we have this wrapper. And what FCH root does is it configures the Linux kernel that when it, so that when it encounters an ARM64 binary, it runs this wrapper to run it, which in turn calls this, which emulates a 64-bit ARM, runs the executable, and it's beautiful. So that's how it works. Definitely check this out. It's going to totally transform your ARM development. You'll be able to get a lot done on ARM a lot faster. And really, th there's no reason why you can't test on ARM and compile GNOME, KDE, all that good stuff on ARM. Even on a really minimal ARM system, you can get this working. Let me show you just again how I did my exports because for my Raspi 3, so you know how to do that. Um, so you basically set up NFS, and the key line is this one, where I'm exporting the root file system. And then I just mount this root file system somewhere on my Ryzen, and I FCH root into it. If I'm emerging stuff that's going to end up in boot as well, like kernels, I, I'll also want to export my boot file system from my uh, Raspi 3 and mount it inside on my Ryzen, and then I should be good to go. So there you have it. Check it out. Remember, it's FCH root. Ah, I closed my window. It's FCH root on code.fun2.org. Just search for it here. Clone it and enjoy. Take care. See you soon.